In the previous movie, I gave you a quick overview of how I could use multiple channels on the Radar Octal Envelope Generator to spice up a patch. In this movie, I want to focus on all the options available in a single channel. To do that, I've simplified the patch somewhat. I have just one envelope, number 8, on Radar, controlling the VCA for the sound. And again, one trigger input is normal to all eight channels on the Radar. You can override that by plugging into later channels downstream. And I have one channel on the Radar going through the green trace on the data, controlling my filter cutoff. Now first off, the name radar stands for repeating, AD for attack decay, or AR for attack release. I can go ahead and set this up to be a repeating function, where it will just keep repeating itself for as long as I have this going. I can use it as an attack release, where it will hold that filter level high as long as I have a note held down. Or as an attack decay, where as soon as it finishes the attack cycle, it goes into decay back to zero. By the way, I have my data set up right now to be 2 volts per grid division, so the output of radar is actually 0 to 10 volts. That's becoming the new standard for envelope generators. In addition to the decay stage, obviously I have an attack stage. The color of these LEDs indicate what mode or phase each channel is in. Blue is attack, purple is sustain, and red is release or decay. So you notice particularly in channel 1, it immediately goes into decay, red. Meanwhile, in channel 8, where I'm using an AR, an attack release generator, it holds purple while the note's down. And after I release the note, it goes into red for release. If I was to slow down the attack on the filter, you see the blue during that whoop up, the sweep up for the filter. So this is the way you can quickly tell what state each channel is in. For me, one of the main attractions of radar is that it has very versatile shape controls. Each channel has its own shape control. Each pair of channels has an equal or opposite control, saying whether or not the attack and decay should be the same shape or opposite shapes. Right now I have it set to opposite shape because that's the standard shape for a normal envelope, where you get a logarithmic attack and an exponential decay. We'll play with this setting for a while, then we'll change it over to equal. I tend to start with my envelopes set at the 6 o'clock position, just a little bit away from its most bent. If I go all the way counterclockwise, the shape has an unusual little kink to it on the attack, where it rises very quickly, then rounds off to hit the very top, and falls pretty quickly. But I can start moving it towards linear the closer I get towards the middle position, in this case, 9 o'clock. Once you get past that 9 o'clock, you start to see that upward bow. We start getting sort of a reverse envelope shape. The attack takes longer to start, and suddenly jumps up at the end. The decay takes a little while, then suddenly dives down to zero. Now by changing the EO switch for this pair of channels to E where they're equal, now you have both log attack and decay, or exponential attack and decay. Here's the log. So the attack shape is kind of correct. The decay is a bit truncated. I can go through linear. And then have them both swoop up and swoop down. Now, if your attack is set to zero, it doesn't matter so much because you just basically get the decay shape. 
But if you're really trying to shape the articulation of a note, like that sudden attack, this is just a little bit of a swoop. You can get some real nuance out of the envelope shapes. Most of the time I start with this though, at O, down to nine o'clock. Let's go ahead and do the fastest attack. Now there's some additional control voltage inputs for each channel of radar. The first one is a switch, basically, to decide whether or not it is an attack decay or an attack release. This is a pretty unusual feature. I'm not really familiar with other envelopes having this. So let's go ahead and pick the mod wheel voltage out from my expert sleepers FH1 down here. And plug that into the first input. When my mod wheel is down, I have my standard attack decay. But when I increase it, now I have an attack release. The second input controls the shape. So I can start with my nice little exponential decay. Let's start changing that towards the linear. And push a little bit further beyond. We now get that logarithmic dive. You can particularly shape attacks with that. Now one more switch you have per pair of channels is when not to take on analog or digital behavior. When you have a short attack, both of them act the same. No matter how often I trigger a note, it reattacks up to that high level. I'll switch over to digital. The real difference comes when I have a longer attack where I'm swelling. Whenever I re-trigger, the digital behavior is to always reset to zero and start the attack all over again. The analog behavior, which is what I personally prefer, but everything has its use, keeps building upon the current level, basically reattacks from where it is rather than restarting. Digital. Analog. Now you might say, where is the control voltage for envelope time? That would say make a natural function. Well, this is a case where you need the blip expander. That allows you to basically flip some of these controls around so that you can use one of the control voltages to change just the attack time, just the decay release time, or both of them together. In a later movie, I'm gonna show some of my favorite options that Blip gives you, but that happens to be one of them. Okay, that's using radar as an envelope generator. I've already showed you in the first movie how you can also gang together outputs three and four, or envelope generators three and four, to take the highest level of two envelopes running at the same time, or in the case down here, of three envelopes six, seven, and eight all running at the same time to create really complex shapes. But there's another function of radar to basically act as an quadrature or octature LFO, where suddenly all of these start doing the wave. To really demonstrate what that can do, I need to put this back into my bigger system. And that's what we'll do for the next movie.